Okay, that's kind of the point. How many of you have heard of uh, René Descartes, the French philosopher? He once said in the Latin phrase, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. But I want to change that a little bit to dictitio ergo sum, I speak, therefore I am. And I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about speaking truth, even when it's unpopular. This is particularly uh, directed towards those who are leading us, who are going to the real world, unlike the comforting, wonderful, fuzzy world of academia where you can say all sorts of crap and it may or may not be true, or relevant, or even useful for real life. You're about to leave this nice nest and go into the places where you will see people who are offensive and who may not like your ideas or may not like anything about you, and that can be a little scary. So I want to say one of the speeches we had last week was about finding your own voice. Each of you here had, is a speaker now, and our name is Speakers into Leaders, and so as you leave, you need to phase into the next group of actually being a leader. You've been a speaker, now it's time to be a leader. One of the things about leading is not following the crowd. I think that's pretty much the definition of leading. And sometimes it's very uncomfortable. Sometimes it's being out on a limb when nothing else is popular. One of my favorite phrases comes from Margaret Thatcher. She says, if it is 37 against 1, and I am the 1, I feel sorry for the 37. She had no problem with being a minority in the room. She had no problem arguing the point, even when it's true. Sometimes truthful is offensive. There was an article I read recently by George Will in the Washington Post. I usually hate George Will. He is a very right-wing blowhard who hates every single liberal. And, but he wrote something very, very poignant, and he wrote, we have made it a national pastime to be offended. We love doing this. I think a lot of people, a lot of Americans, love playing the offended card. When something happens, we are offended by it. How dare you say something like that? And when I see this, I think there are 310 million of us in this country. What one of us says is somebody somewhere is going to be offended. How many of you have seen Facebook flame wars? Where you say something, somebody else says something, and there is this back and forth fiery rhetoric of, you're so wrong, you're so wrong. Have any of you been in any of those or had those on your... It's pretty common. And it's ridiculous in the sense that there are people, when they're speaking the truth, they have actual flames in their wars. What I'm speaking is things like Joan of Arc, things like John Huss, people who were speaking Protestant truth in the 1200s and they were getting burnt. There are literal flame wars going on to silence them, unlike the Facebook flame wars. But they still spoke the truth. And no matter what the cost, they still spoke the truth. Galileo was pushed time and time again to recant. He was told, stop saying that the Earth goes around the sun. Stop saying that, because we all know that the Earth is the center of the universe. You need to recant. And he did, because he was being persecuted. He was under house arrest. But he said, no matter what I say, he says, ever assume you obey. No matter what I say, it still moves. Earth still moves, no matter what I say. The truth is the truth, and it will continue on. Here at Sac State, you've probably been encouraged how to present your ideas. Everyone has seen your projects and, and presentations at the end. How to present your ideas without offending someone. And I want to encourage you, when you start speaking, don't sacrifice the truth for the sake of being politically correct. I'm going to say some weird statements that sound horrible to the beginning, but there's actually a point to them. I think it is okay to feel racist. I think it's okay to feel homophobic. I think it's okay to feel elitist. I don't think it's okay to act on these and turn these into policy. Your feelings are your feelings, and you can say what you believe and how you feel, but turning that into law, turning that into de facto rules is what harms people. But you can feel how you feel. And there's a difference between the two. Speaking truth, if you're, current, if you're constantly guarding your truth, if you're constantly guarding your the worry, every time you want to post something, every time you want to say something, every time you want to write something, especially as you graduate start your brand new jobs and you don't want to ruffle the feathers, you don't want to offend the, the hierarchy, you'll have a tendency to bury the truth for sake of acceptance. And things get bad when it happens. How many of you have ever heard of the structure of scientific revolutions by Thomas Kuhn? It's a book, it's, 
It's an interesting book because he tries to describe how do these scientific revolutions happen in the world. A lot of people graduating the semester are from engineering. And one of the things to keep in mind is that engineering thrives on new ideas, new better ways to do things. More efficient, cheaper, safer, better ways to do things. And that only happens when you come into a field as young, brand new creators, engineers, innovators, and you challenge the status quo. That's the only way it works. This happened throughout history. Watson and Crick were 20-something scientists, and they proposed the radical idea that DNA were in these weird little bands called double helixes. Everyone thought it was absolutely stupid. When Aristotle said that he was a student of, of Plato's, and he suggested maybe every single building block of life is a sphere all down to the little tiny level, it was the strangest idea anyone had ever heard. When Mark Gottlieb was a 20-something physician in Los Angeles, he noticed that people in 1981 were dying of strange immune systems and they were otherwise healthy. He suggested that maybe it was a brand new agent, something that he called gay cancer, would later be called AIDS. He said, maybe it's a new agent, maybe it's not just lifestyle, maybe it's not just drugs, maybe it's an actual new disease. These new paradigms, these new ways of looking at things are what changed the way, are what changed the way that we solve problems, the ways that we make things better. There's a quote by Gandhi, says, even if you're a minority of one, the truth is the truth. Even if you're the only one in that conference room, the truth is the truth. If you look for truth, C.S. Lewis says, if you look for truth, you may find comfort in the end. But if you look for comfort, you will not get either comfort or truth, only soft soap and wishful thinking to begin and despair in the end. Arthur Schopenheimer says, and I'll leave you with this last quote, all truth passes through three phases. First, it's ridicule. Second, it's violently opposed. Third, it's accepted as self-evident. Epus humiliare. Even if you dare not to speak the truth, it's still the truth. When you go out there, challenge the status quo. Say how you're feeling. Pose the unpopular idea. Stand alone. Vote by yourself. Make your voice be heard. You have been trained how to be a speaker. Now it's time to be a leader. Mr. Tesman.